Here's the Panasonic 8 to 18 millimeter f 2.8 to f4 ultra wide zoom lens. I'm going to compare this lens to the 7 to 14 millimeter zoom lens and see which one you might want to have if you're looking for a wide angle zoom or if you already have the 7 to 14 and you want to upgrade to the 8 to the 18. The 8 to the 18 is very well built, but it's very light. I was surprised how light this lens is. Here's the 7 to 14. To me, they weigh the same size even though the 7 to 14 is noticeably smaller than the 8 to 18. You could bring down the size, the, the length of the 8 to 18 by unscrewing the lens hood. Like so. It's a very big lens hood that comes with the lens. Once you take off the lens hood, they're more comparable in size, but the 8 to 18 is still longer. Take off the lens cap. The 7 to 14 has a built in lens hood, and the lens cap is like so. But the 8 to 18 has a traditional pinch lens cap, and it also accepts filters. So if you have a, what is this, 67 millimeter filter, a UV filter, an ND filter, polarizer, you can screw it on to the 8 to 18, whereas the 7 to 14 does not have a lens filter. I've seen some hacks where people had uh, made their own kind of filter, or you can put this in a matte box and have a 4x4 filter on there. But generally, the 7 to 14, you just don't shoot it with uh, putting a filter on there. I've also noticed the bulb in the 7 to 14, it protrudes a lot, but with the lens hood, it protects it. With the 8 to 18, I don't notice the bulb as much. The bulb isn't as bulby. <laughs> The lens, as you zoom, does go in and out, but it doesn't extend the body of the lens. It stays within the lens casing. Same thing with the 7 to 14. The 8 to 18 has a manual and autofocus switch, where the 7 to 14 does not have a switch. Neither of them have image stabilization, but because they're so wide, you don't necessarily need image stabilization. The AT-18 is also weather resistant and this does not have weather sealing. Although I've taken this on the beach and I have not noticed any weather issues. The color is also, this is all matte black and there's this old, uh, the gray that used to be in all the uh, Lumex lenses. This is an F4, whereas this is an F2.8-4. The way the lens steps down is that you're only at f2.8 at the 8 millimeter then as the as soon as you go to 9 you're already down to like a 3.1 by the time you hit 14 you're already at like a 3.3 or 3.5 and then 18 is you're at a 4. With the older gray lenses the gray ring lenses I really enjoyed the rubbery texture of the zoom and the focus ring nice grippy rubber. The new lenses don't have that rubber grip to it. So this is more like their um, all of their new lenses. So I don't feel the texture of it as well as I did with the 7 to 14 and that I miss. Another upgrade to the 8 to 18 is apparently, and I'm going to be testing this, all of that nasty flare, the purple or green flare that is very apparent on the 7 to 14 is supposedly gone on the 8 to 18. The 7 to 14, for those of you who've used this, if you shot into the sun or you're shooting into lights, uh, film lights or even house lights, there's a pretty nasty purple hinge or a fringe flare or green flare that comes with the, I think with the coating of the lens, it's nasty to me. But with the 8 to 18, which is, I'm gonna test soon, that flare is supposedly gone. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these two lenses. I'm gonna go to my backyard. I have a GH5 here. The GH5, when shooting in 4K mode, does not crop in. So it's a two times crop. And if you want the 35 millimeter full frame equivalent, 
The 7 to 14 is a 14 to 28 millimeter, and the 8 to four, uh, 18 is a 16 to 36 millimeter in 35 millimeter equivalent. That extra reach is nice, having that extra reach from the 14 to 18, but I don't know why they uh, started with 8 and not the 7, because as you'll see from my tests, this, just going that one millimeter from eight to seven has a visual difference and it has a certain effect to it that I personally like that really wide angle, almost fisheye look. And it's gone with the eight millimeter. So maybe that's a trade-off uh, advantage with the seven millimeter. If, if you really wanted that distor kind of distorted wide angle, very trippy uh, look, you can't get that with the 8 to 18 simply because it only goes to 8 millimeters. But you can get it with the 7 to 14. So I'm gonna do a test and uh, you guys can judge for yourself. This is the 8 to 18 millimeter. I'm shooting at 8 millimeter, F16. This is 30p, shooting in my backyard. It's on autofocus. Now I'm going to zoom in to 18 millimeters. Now I'm going to zoom back out. Here's the 7 to 14 millimeters. I haven't changed the position of the tripod. So the GH5 is on the, the tripod the same distance, same height, same distance, same everything from the 8 to 18, and I have it at f16, shooting at ISO 200, um, the 30p 10, uh, 4K, everything's the same. It's just now I'm on a different lens, seven mm at seven millimeters. Now I'm going to go to eight millimeters. This is eight millimeters. This should be identical to the 8 to 18. Looks a little wider to me, but it should be identical. Now I'm going to go to 14 millimeters. Going back to 7. 7 going all the way to 14. Here's the lens flare test of my lemon tree. This is at 8 millimeters. Get that lens flare. Here's the lens flare test with the 7 to 14 millimeters shooting at 7 millimeters. Now I'm going to go to 8 millimeters. Let's get that lens flare. I would say the 7 to 14 is still a really good wide angle lens. However, the 8 to 18, you know, is better.